Well, good morning. Welcome to Coy Assembly this morning. We're having, or I was having a little technical difficulty, but that was on the human side, so I guess that wouldn't be technical, would it? Uh, but anyway, uh, we are here today. We have come to worship the Lord. We have come to praise Him, and I hope you brought your praise britches today. I hope you, or if you're in a skirt, I hope you brought your praise shoes. We'll just go there with that. Uh, but today we're going to worship the Lord, and we're going to praise the Lord, and we're going to do it in a fashion to where he readily accepts it, and he is ready to hear from his people today. And so I want to ask you just to go ahead and stand up. We are supposed to have our monthly men's meeting, would be Tuesday night of this week, but we were trying to reschedule and do a little, di little bit different this month with a bonfire out of the different place, but that is not going to happen due to scheduling difficulties. So we will forego our men's meeting this month, but we will have our men's breakfast on the third Sunday morning of this month. So we invite you to come to that. If you're a man, if you're online, you're watching us and you want to come be a part of that, you're more than welcome to come be a part of that. It's just to come and eat and fellowship for a little while. We'll have a devotion and then we'll come right in here uh, for Sunday school and for worship experience that morning so we love you let me just say this the Lord loves you and he is here to meet with you today whether you're online or whether you're here in person with us he is here to meet with you today I'm so excited about the word that he has for us today I'm excited about worship this morning brother Andrew is going to come in a, in a few moments and pray over the the needs that we have like we've been doing and we're just excited to be here today, and we're going to worship our King today. Did you come to worship the Lord? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you. It's always a pleasure. It's always an honor to be in your presence, Lord. And so today, I ask you, King of kings and Lord of lords, that you would settle into this place today. Holy Spirit, that you would move and you would have your way, Lord, that we would, we would have a, a demonstration of your power and of your presence today, Lord God. That's what we're here for, Lord Jesus, is to meet with you. So as we go through this service, we give you permission to move in our hearts. We give you permission to move in our minds. And we give you permission, Lord, to save our souls from the wretched, evil sins of this world. In your name I pray, amen and amen. Would you worship the Lord with me today? There's a call that covers me When I kneel down at your feet It's a place of healing It's a place where I find freedom a place my eyes can't see, where my spirit longs to be, it's a place of healing, it's a place I live in freedom. Heaven, I'm gonna shout your name Till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship There's a love that lives in me For you, Lord, my Savior King Who breaks the sin that's binding And leads me to a place of freedom I'm gonna sing my song I'm gonna sing my song Like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for Joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. I'm gonna lift my hand till I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down. I've come to worship. Come to worship I'm gonna sing my song Like I am unashamed I'm gonna 
shout for joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. And there's no one that can bring me peace, that can wash me clean like can free me as you sing my soul I'm gonna lift my hand so I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name till the walls can fall and down I've come to worship I've come to worship Ashamed, I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship, I've come to worship, cause there's no one that can bring me peace, that can wash me clean like you, Lord. There's nothing in this world that can free me. You save my soul. I'm gonna lift my hands till I could reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name till the walls can fall and now I've come to worship. Come to worship Jesus Light of the world You step down into darkness Open my eyes Let me see Beauty that made this heart Been with you. Sing it again, light of the world, light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes, and let me see the beauty that makes this heart adore you. The hope of a life's been Sing it out. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful. So highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became together lovely all 
just won't fall To be overcome by your presence, Lord Your presence, Lord Nothing worth more Nothing worth more than will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord Jesus, I'm tasting. of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord come on with our hands and worship Holy Spirit you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Come on, sing it. Your glory, God, is what our hearts by your presence, Lord, oh, holy, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. I'm gonna sing my 
soul Like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy At the mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to worship Amen What an honor that we get to worship the King of Kings this morning What a great joy it is we want to take this time and we want to pray for the needs in this church and in this community. And so what I want to do is if you have a need in the building this morning, I just simply want you just to raise your hand if you have a need that you need touched by the Lord. And at home and online, if you're online, I want you just to mention in the comments what that need is. Or even if you don't want to do that, just mention your name and we'll be sure to, to read and to pray for it. But we want to lift those needs up this morning. We know that we serve a God that is more than capable of meeting each and everything we have. So if you would, will you just pray with me yes. with this morning? Father God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you that we have the freedom, God, to come to your house and to worship and to praise you, Father. We thank you that you are a God, Lord, that loves us so much that you care about our needs, Lord, and our wants, Father God. The things in our lives, Lord, that each and every one of us need answered, Father God, you are faithful to do that, Lord. I pray for the needs that were mentioned this morning, Father God. I pray that each and every one of them, Lord, that you would search their hearts out, Father, and that you would meet that need, Father God. I pray that your hand of blessing, Lord, and just healing, Father God, would be over each and every one of these needs that were mentioned this morning, Father. We can continue, Lord, to lift up our country and our nation, Father God. Everything that is going on, Lord, I pray that you would just bring a healing upon this land, Father God. Not just a physical healing, Lord, but a spiritual healing as well, Lord. I pray that as we go further in this service, Lord, that we would just continue to focus on you, Lord. That you would be with Pastor as he brings the word, Father, and you would help us to apply it to our hearts and to our lives, Father. And we pray all this in your name. Amen. This morning, if we want to give you an opportunity to give, and we have several ways of doing that. And so if you're online or, or different things, you, there's three ways to give. Um, you can text the word to give to 601 300 Six one four zero. Um, you can mail the check to seven nineteen J C Warren Road, Preston, Mississippi three nine three five four. Or you, there will be a link in the comments. And so we want to give you an opportunity to do that. If you're in the building, um, we'll actually have the offertory bag set up in the back and in the front this morning, as you can give on your way out. But we want to pray over the offering this morning, and then we want to continue and move on into the service. So let us pray, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we have. The, the opportunity to give to you, Lord, to further your kingdom, Father, that you've blessed each and every one of us so much, Lord, and we just want to continue to be a blessing to you. We want to continue to be faithful, Lord, of what you've commanded us to do, Lord, with our first fruits, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that you would bless the gift and the giver this morning, Lord. And I pray this in your name. Amen. 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 I wanted to do a different song this morning. We've done it once before in worship, but I want to kind of reintroduce it to you this morning doing, during the offering portion of our, our worship this morning. And I want to just say this, so we don't keep putting it off. Hunter Luke is singing next Sunday morning for the offering. Uh, our schedules have failed to meet up enough times for us to, to feel comfortable doing it. But next Sunday morning for worship, he's going to bless us with our offertory. And uh, it's going to be a really cool, upbeat song. It's on the radio, so you, you're all familiar with it. Um, but it's, it's going to bless your heart. And so I hope this one does today as well. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise Treasures to fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together And every desire now satisfied here in your love Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you There's nothing, nothing is better than you I'm not afraid 
you've seen them all And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is still God in the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing Better than you There's nothing Better than you There's nothing Nothing is better than you Oh, there's nothing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into that would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise <clears throat> hallelujah well I had fun worshiping the Lord this morning did you let's try that again I had fun worshiping the Lord this morning did you amen, amen. you know worshiping the Lord is not necessarily meant to be somber it's not necessarily meant to be All seriousness. It is serious. It's very serious. But you can have fun and worship the Lord. You can have fun in the presence of the Lord. Why? Don't you like to learn things? Don't you like to find things out? You find those things out about you and who you are and who you're supposed to be in the presence of the Lord. And so this morning, I want you to, if you want to, turn with me to the book of Matthew. We'll be reading our scripture a little bit later on. Uh, as we go through this morning, um, because there's some preface, some things that we need to talk about before we get to that part of the scripture, because that, that part of the service is going to be uh, uplifting to us. That part of the service is, is going to be uh, special to us, and there's an emphasis. And so we're saving our scripture to the end, but we're going to take a portion of scripture from the book of Matthew, and the book, uh, verse 20, uh, I'm sorry. Chapter 22, we're going to take a portion of scripture from Mark, I believe it's chapter 12, and then we're going to take a portion of scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 6. And so if you want to stick your fingers there so that when we get to that point, we, are going, we will um, talk about them, they will be up on the screen at that point, but before we get to that, there's a lot of groundwork that we need to lay for that. So if you'll excuse me just a moment, we'll jump right into it. Amen. I've entitled this sermon, That God Don't Do Half. Okay? He's not a halfway God. But we serve him halfway. So God don't do half. It reminds me of a song, and I don't know why it reminded me of this song. But there was a country song that says, Don't give me no lines and keep your hands to yourself. Well, in my spirit, I can just hear the Lord at least speak to me and say, don't give me no lies about what you're going to do and keep your halves to yourself. In other words, I don't want half of you. I want all of you. So don't give me no lies and keep your halves to yourself. I want the truth and I want all of you. 
Well, that didn't go over as well as I thought it was going to, <laughs> just to be quite honest with you. Um, but God doesn't do halves, and he is not a half God. So I want to tell you a story of my life, or not the whole story of my life, but a portion of my life. When I was a young lad, fresh out of high school and partly into college and partly out of college, um, I made a decision to do something halves with my younger brother. Uh, well, I, I guess it was a little further on down the line than that because it wasn't long after we made that decision that Sheree and I, we both got married, me and my younger brother. Um, and so what we did was <clears throat> we thought we were going to be real. Well, we were living at home still. And so, well, we'll go in halves and buy this four-wheeler, Right? And so while we were living at home, it worked out good because it was always in, there for us. But once we got married, the four-wheeler went to his house, to my house, to his house, to my house. I used it more than he did because he, he was going through a phase in his life. I don't know where he was at, but he, he wasn't really a hunter at that point. He didn't get in the woods. He didn't do all that kind of stuff. Um, but he didn't require much use of the four-wheeler. And so... When we were at home, it worked out good for us both. When we got married, the four-wheeler worked out better for me. Well, he's more of a golfer than I was. As a matter of fact, you couldn't have paid me to watch golf at that time. Okay? It is the most boring thing in the world. That's what I thought. That and NASCAR. Who wants to watch somebody ride around in a circle? Okay? But some people love it. Now, if you love it, you know, I don't know where you're at when the whole kneeling and all that kind of stuff has been going on, but... Uh, <clears throat> Just, just to be honest, all right, that, that just further sent it down the drain for me. But here's the deal. When we were at home, it was great. When we broke off and, and got married and did our separate lives, even though we were only 20 minutes apart, it was like, oh, I wish I had the four-wheeler here. Now I got to go up there to his house to get it and then go back to where I'm going to hunt or this or that or the other. And so I mentioned golf, and he's pretty good at golf. You know where he was. And here's the deal. He came to me one day and he said, why don't we trade the four-wheeler for a golf cart? I've got one figured out. And at this time, I was just trying to get into golf. I was really going out there just to hit the ball. I didn't really keep, care about keeping score. I just wanted to hit it as hard as I could. And it didn't work out very well. <laughs> it didn't work out for the ball or my score, all right, because I was hitting it hard. It just wasn't going where I wanted it to go. So I would go out there. And I would play a little bit, and he was a member of the country club in equipment, and he left the cart out there at the stall. And so anytime I wanted to get it, I had to go out there and get it, and you know, this out of the other. And so it didn't work out for me very well at that point. Well, a little time rolled along, and then he, he got out of the country club, and he was living in, in Clarkdale area. And, then, and so somebody wanted to buy the golf cart. Well, he said... Let me, just, let me just think about it or whatever. And he called me and he said, listen, somebody wants to buy the golf cart. You want to sell it? He wants to give us X amount of dollars for it. And I was like, well, I don't ever get to use it anyway. You know, whatever. Go, you know, go ahead. And I won't tell you the, the ending of the story, but halves didn't work out too well. It did at one point, but it didn't for both of us at some point. And so halves didn't really didn't really do it. That wasn't, it wasn't a great decision because we both ended up with nothing in the end. And so I want us to turn our attention to the scripture this morning. And I, wanna, I just want to run through a couple of stories laying the foundation and the groundwork for the scripture at the end. If you remember back to the Exodus, when God sent Moses to lead his people out, Let me just remind you of the statement that we started with. God doesn't do halves, okay? What if, let's just suppose that he was a half God and he did half things. What if he would have sent Moses all the way down there, led the people out, he, I, I went through all the plagues, got everybody on the way out, and then they would have got to the Red Sea, and then when the Red Sea was supposed to, to, to uh, part, he said, uh, 
you know, I don't, I don't think I want, I don't even want to do that. You know, I just, just forget about what I said. He led them halfway out to a point to where they couldn't do anything else without him. Right? And so, miraculously, the seas parted. They went across. Let's just say, I mean, we, we know it did happen, but let's just say that he didn't stop there on the half part. He got them through that, and he got them to the wilderness where they, remember, they were walking around the wilderness all those years because of their own doings and their own makings. But they were right about to the point to where they were fixing to go into the promised land. He's like, yeah, you know what? That's a fun journey, but it ends here. I'm done. You know? Had every right to. Because we know how the Israelites are. Serve him a little while. Serve false God a little while. You know, Lord, you got to do this for me. He provided manna for them. He prov the provision was for them every day. There, they were still complaining. He had every right to stop doing, stop leading, stop saving his people. But God is not a God of half. He doesn't do anything halfway. And so let's look at a, a, another story in the Bible. When I think about going halfway where you don't want to be left halfway, I think about Daniel in the lion's den, the man serving God, praying three times a day. He knows that, the God, that God has his back, right? So they trick him, and they get him thrown into the lion's den. And can you imagine when he was thrown in there, those lions jumped up. And they're like, finally, we're fixing to chow down, dude. And the story goes that God protected them from the mouths of the lion. But what if he didn't? What if he said, okay, you can eat the bottom half of him, but I still want the top half of him. He don't do halves. His salvation was whole. His freedom was a whole freedom. His safety was a whole safety. God is not going to lead you to a place and then leave you there. He's not. He doesn't do anything halfway. Do you think that God would do that? Do you think that he would lead you somewhere and just like tease you a little bit, get your hopes up, and then all of a sudden, nah, I'm, I'm done with you. I'm not going to do that anymore. You're not a puppet on a string. That's not what's going on. When you commit your life to him, he is all in for you. And you got to be all in for him. See, the disconnect, the half point is the way that we are. As people, as children of God, we say we love God, but we don't turn our affections towards God. Except maybe on Sunday mornings. Maybe during our little five-minute devotional and then a five-minute prayer afterwards. That's not enough devotion. That's not all of the way. That's not all in. You remember when we did the study with Mark Batterson, All In? That book was, was a phenomenal book, and it talked about being all in in your relationship with God. If God wouldn't do that to us, then why do we think that we can do that to him and still have everything that he has afforded for us? The blessings, the healings, the restoration. How do we feel like that we can give God half of what he's given to us? God does not do half. God doesn't do things halfway. I want to, I want to read this quote to you from Joyce Myers. Many of you know her. Um, she is a phenomenal preacher. She's a phenomenal preacher. And uh, she said this, God doesn't do things halfway. He goes all out when he does something. It's not just barely enough. It's not mediocre. And it's not lukewarm. Well, we know what the Bible says about being lukewarm, right? So in God's eyes, that's halfway. That's neither good or bad. That's just kind of somewhere in between. And God didn't, listen to me, he didn't send half of his son. Did he? No. He sent his only perfect spotless son he sent us the whole son because we would need the whole salvation jesus didn't take half of a beating or die half of a death he didn't do half the sacrifice that would only cover half of our sin he gave it all we sing a song that says jesus paid it all 
They don't say Jesus paid it half. Jesus paid it half. Jesus paid it half. Half to him I owe. That's not what he says. It says Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. But we give half. We give half. God doesn't give half of a salvation, does he? All right, your right side's saved. This is going to make it to heaven, but your left side's going to hell. I didn't know the left side. I knew the right side. He didn't give you half of brain. He gave you a right side of your brain and a left side of your brain. And they function differently to do different things. But he gave you a whole brain. He gave you a whole brain. God doesn't give half of his grace or half of his mercy or half the healing that we need. He doesn't do half of anything. He gives it all. He does it all. 100%. God is a God of fullness, is he not? It speaks to this in the word of, of God. He, he doesn't say be half in the spirit. He said be filled with the spirit. He said, and when you are full of the spirit, then you will receive the spirit of tongues or the gift of tongues. And as the spirit enables you, the fullness of that spirit, as it enables you, then you will speak in other tongues as the spirit gives you utterance. Yes. See, we're looking for the tongues. We're not looking for the fullness. We're looking for the outward sign, not the inward. It comes as a package. You can't have the outward without having the inward first. Yes. You can't have salvation without accepting Christ. And Christ don't do anything halfway. So you have the fullness of salvation. <clears throat> Excuse me. The fullness of salvation. God is an all-in type of God. And if you're going to be his, you have to understand that. And you have to give him all of you. All of you. All of you. So let's look at Matthew chapter 22 really quick. Verses 33 through 40 it reads like this hearing that jesus had silenced the sadducees the pharisees got together and one of them an expert in the law tested him with this question teacher what is the greatest commandment in the law and jesus says love the lord your god with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind this is the first and greatest commandment. If you're going to follow one of the commandments, it needs to be this one. The first and the greatest commandment. And the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Listen to verse 40. All of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments or commands, depending on which version you're reading. All of the law. You say, well, Pastor Ryan, I see that. And I kind of understand what you're saying. But I won't, I, I, I'm just having a little hard time with that. Okay, let's do this. Let's turn over to Deuteronomy right quick. Chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. It reads like this. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Remember, we talked about that just a few moments ago. <clears throat> so that you, your children, and their fathers after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all of his decrees, all of his decrees and commands that I give you, <clears throat> and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey, so that it may go well with you, and, it may, and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with what? All of your heart and all of your soul and with all of your strength. So it says it in the New Testament, and before Jesus came, it said it in the Old Testament. So are you still trying to tell me that the Old Testament is still irrelevant? No, the Old Testament points to the New Testament. 
The Old Testament points to the things that were to come. The Savior, the Messiah, the soon coming King. The Old Testament points and leads and guides us to the New Testament. The New Testament is still going on today. Just because Jesus left doesn't mean that the New Testament is finished being written. Why? Because he is still doing the signs, the wonders, the miracles in our lives today. We're still having salvation. We're still having baptisms. We're still being filled with the Holy Spirit today. So the New Testament is still being written. So, no, the the Old Testament is not irrelevant. Okay? We just change the way that we do things from the old to the new. Why? Because the old was too hard. One goat... One bull, the the blood shed from that couldn't save you for eternity. It was from year to year. But the perfect spotless lamb, the shedding of his blood, could make provision for you for all eternity. It can. So he don't do half of anything. He does all of everything. And then our last scripture, let me just pull you back into the New Testament in Mark chapter 12 and it, at 28 through 31 and it reads just exactly almost the same. It says this, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important one? The most important one, listen, this is what Jesus said, is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind and with all of your strength. What does that mean? That your efforts need to be all in. All in. Heart, mind, soul, that completes the body. And now he's adding one more thing physically with your strength. Do it. As unto the Lord. Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it as unto the Lord. It doesn't say whatever you do in word or deed, do it halfway to the Lord. God doesn't want halfway. Remember the lukewarm reference. He wants you all in. Because he went all in for you, we should be able to go all in for him. It doesn't matter if you don't understand everything it doesn't matter if there's some some murky places that that you still haven't figured out guess what you're not going to figure it all out and let me give you a little hint it's going to be better for you just to accept what this says than try to figure it out because you're going to get confused you're going to get led astray because there's going to be some theologian that that teaches differently especially in today The Bible tells us that there will be false teachers. And it's going to sound good. And it's going to sound right. Why? Because you don't wholly believe this. You partially believe this. We've partially taken these scriptures and made ourselves, made it convenient for us to be the people that we want to be. You can't tell me that we've not done that. You can look at history and see that they did it. From the very beginning of time to the end. From Adam and Eve, if they would have completely obeyed the Lord, if they would have wholly obeyed the Lord instead of mostly obeying the Lord, we wouldn't be at this point today. But there was that halfway, that that partial part that they didn't do, that they didn't obey. And so we find ourselves today in a very, very sinful world that can be remedied. And that remedy is Jesus. But before the people can know Jesus, they have to know that we serve him wholly, completely. We can't say that we love Jesus and do something else. We can't. If we say we love Jesus, then we have to live like we love Jesus. And we can't live part of the way. We got to live the whole way. The whole way. All three of these scriptures, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, say the same thing. All, all, all. Love the Lord your God with all. Love the Lord your God with all. Love the Lord your God with all. 
not halves, not parts, all. If we can get to that point, man, we can blow the roof off of this building. If we can get to that point, we can curse the coronavirus and it will die. But you know what? We don't believe with all of our hearts that Jesus is able. I firmly believe that. There's not many days that go by that I don't pray that the Lord will strike that virus down. And I say that I know that he can do it. Because I know it tells me that he can do it. But you don't just believe here. you got to believe here. It's got to be a part of your spirit. That's why he says, love the Lord your God with all of your mind and with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. You can't leave one of those aside or it taints everything. You got to be all in. You got to be all in, not half, but all. All of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. And if you truly love God, then you will obey these commands. What does that mean, Pastor? It means all in. All in. So let me just give you a definition of all. The whole of. Pretty simple, right? The whole, it means everything used in referring to quantity, extent, or duration. Let me give you a definition that I, I skipped up here. Lukewarm means lacking, listen to this, conviction or enthusiasm, or you're just indifferent. Eh, either way. No, you can't, you can't do that with God. It's all, or it's nothing. All or nothing. You remember the scripture where he says, Lord, but I cast out demons in your name. You might have did it in my name, but I don't really know who you are. So, you're gone. I never knew you. If God is to know you, you have to be all in. If you're going to get your eternal reward, you have to be all in. There's no partial reward. It's all. It's all of everything that the Lord has to offer you. He's not going to say, well, you lived good here, 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 here. So every six months, like, you know, your life was when you were serving me, I'm going to give you a blessing. I'm going to, you know, you can stay up here for six months and you can go down there for six months. That's not going to happen like that. It's all or nothing. I don't want to be looking, uh, looking, lukewarm. I try to say lacking and lukewarm at the same time. It didn't work. See, you got to be all in on one word or the other. <laughs> lukewarm, lacking conviction. If you're not growing in Christ, it's because you're lacking conviction. Come on, somebody. You got to be all in. You got to be all in. I want to be all in with God. I want to be the whole deal. I want him to use me wholly and completely. And if we're only giving parts of ourselves to the Lord, then he can't use you like he wants to use you. Give him your whole self and he will use you to do great and mighty things. Great and mighty things. So if you love God with your whole heart, not part or half of it, but all of it, then you will keep his commands. Then you will keep his commands and live according to his teachings and adhere to his standards. They'll no longer be your standards for salvation and your standards for holy living. They'll be his. And there'll be a lot of things that you have to change in your life. But change is good. It's hard, but it's good. It's tough, but it's worth it. If you're going to get your eternal reward, if you're going to live in heaven and be in the presence of, of God all the time, then you're going to have to change. And you're going to have to quit giving part. You're going to have to quit giving half. You're going to have to quit giving most. And you're going to have to give all. 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 How many inches are there in a foot? Twelve. Right. Did I get that right, Mr. Lair? That was right. Twelve inches in a foot. If you take one of those inches away, it's not a full foot, is it? If you take an eighth or a sixteenth of that inch away, it's not a whole foot. It's got to all be there. 
And you say, well, that don't really matter. Yes, it does. You go to a building that, that doors just you know, swing open on their own and they're not lined up and they're off kilter. You know, I've, I've hung sheetrock before and I've cut pieces of sheetrock short before and there'd be a gap in there like that. And it's because his reading was different than my reading. The way he read a tape was different. It should be the same. And that's what's going to happen to people in this world. That's what has happened to people in this world. That their reading of the scripture isn't the same as their reading and interpretation of the scripture. So they only get part of it. It's not there as a whole. We must be whole. We must be wholly committed to the Lord. I'm committed to turning this air conditioner down. I hope you're committed. Oh, no wonder. It's five degrees warmer on the... You got to be all in. All in. When the Lord put this on my heart this week, I can't even explain how this jumped in my spirit. The first thing I, I, I write, wrote down was, is God don't do half. And that's all I had. But that jumped out in my spirit. And as I began to think about that, I was beginning to pray about that. It rolls into every aspect of our life. I've heard people say that, well, I'm only going to do as good a job as they give me good pay. Something to that effect. That's not the right attitude to have. You go in there and you work your tail off. If you was making a million dollars an hour or if you're making ten dollars an hour, you're supposed to work the same. Remember, whatever you do, do as unto the Lord. You're not doing it for them. You're doing it as a worship to the Lord because he provided you with a way to make money. Let's talk about perspective for a minute. Everything that you do. Have you cut jobs? Have you, you know, didn't work as hard as you? Yeah, I have too. I have too. But we're not supposed to do that. I've been stinging in my spirit with this half this week. Half this week. Half the prayer time. Half the prep time. Half the study time. Half the worship time. Are you giving half of what you're supposed to give for your tithe? Or part? of what It rolls into every part of your life. Both spiritually and non. You're still supposed to give it 100%. 100%. It's about discipline. It's about understanding. You don't have wisdom without discipline and understanding. You just don't have it. You don't have it. And so when we give God our all, those things that we might have slopped over before, we'll find ourselves being more desirable to complete that task like it's supposed to be completed I told you the story about me as a, a, a young lad another one, one of those stories I got my, my license plate man those little Dr. Pepper bottles that used to be in the glass 16 ounce bottles I, I love those things and I'd ride down the road and I'd boom, I would chunk it over there it was a game to me to see if I could hit that road sign because I wanted to hear it go bang I got good at it good at it I would roll my window down. I'm a, I'd get off of football practice, and I'd go buy bumpers and get me a big bag. Two hamburgers, two Cokes, two fries, two apple pies, and two drinks. And I'd eat it on the way home, every bit of it. And then I'd eat supper later when Mama made supper. But that trash wasn't staying in my truck. I'd throw it out. I didn't care. It wasn't a big deal to me. But as I got closer to the Lord, and this seems like something small, but it's an example to you. Once I started getting closer to the Lord, when I would throw that stuff out, I'd be like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That wasn't right. I've even turned around and went back and got stuff. Because that was a conviction of my heart. So it covers everything. The Bible is not in part. It's as a whole. 
We don't serve God in part, but we serve God in whole or we're supposed to. And so today, let me look at you in the eyeball and say, half is not good enough. All is good enough. Online, half is not good enough. Whole is what it takes. You can't pay but half of your power bill but one time. And then the next time, if you don't pay all of it and the rest of the last one, you're living in the dark. Same thing with your water bill. And you're walking around stinking. The Bible says cleanliness is next to godliness. It's just an old saying. But you've heard it because you've laughed. We got to take God serious. We got to take our salvation serious. You want to know why you can't get free? It's because you're not serious with God. You're part of the way there. You want to be serious, but you're not all in. When you get all in and you spend time at these altars, the Lord will deliver you. He will set you free. He will do anything that's needed in your life. But you got to commit your ways to the Lord. How do you do that? You got to take me down. The Bible says, what? Humble yourselves before the Lord. And when it's the right time, he will lift you up. So just because you start the humbling process doesn't mean it's his time to lift you up. You got to get clean. You got to get stay. You got to stay clean. You got to get humble. You got to serve. When you begin to do those things. The Lord will begin to turn that back this way. Why? Have you ever thought about that? He will lift you up because it glorifies him. All the, the things that you laid down at this altar, all the things that you wept, at, wept over at this altar, the, the, the shame, the guilt, the embarrassment that you've called yourself and others, the things that you lay down at this altar, he delivers you from them if you give it all if you don't you have an experience you walk away and you come back the next week you get up you walk away and you come back the next week we've all done it I've done it but it only takes one time to give your all and to continue giving your all because if you don't give your all the whole time then you're liable to find yourself right back at the altar, repenting over the same thing because you've fallen. You're living in a fallen, sinful state again. He doesn't clean you up for you to do that. He intends for you to be set free. The Bible says when the, the Spirit of the Lord sets you free, you are free indeed. That doesn't, doesn't mean you're free as long as you're in this church building. We got to go. It's time. It's time. Listen, we, we've got probably a third of the people that we would have here if it wasn't for the events of the last three or four months. And I get it. I get it. Maybe they're tuned in. I hope they're tuned in at home. But they got to do it at home, and you got to do it where you are. It's time to go all in. And so I want to close with a question this morning. And I want to propose to you <clears throat> an opportunity for you to go all in. Caitlin, if you will start that music. The opportunity has never been better to go all in than right now. There's not a better opportunity for you to go all in again than tonight at prayer time, 6 o'clock. All in is not, now I lay me down to sleep, Lord, I need a million dollars. All in is not, God, forgive me for that. I knew better than to do that. It set me free. That's not all in. All in is time. All in is effort. 
All in is a desperate heart, a desperate soul, a desperate spirit that needs to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's all in. When you have that kind of attitude, then you will go down and he will come up in you. And once he begins to come up in you, you want more. You want more. You want more. And suddenly, a chapter is not good enough. Suddenly, I'm, 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 this story is three chapters long, and I'm in a chapter and a half, but I really got to go to bed. That, that's not good enough anymore. You got to find out. There's a thirst for knowledge. There's a thirst for more of him. And so today is your first opportunity to go all in. All in. Would you stand with me? If you want to go all in, if you're tired of being half or less than, if you're tired of being bullied, by the devil you start by going all in you start by committing your ways to the Lord you start by salvation and you stay at salvation until the Lord moves you up that won't take long he knows your heart he knows your spirit but you got to start at salvation and you got to commit yourself to the Lord for what he wants for your life, not what you want for it. Chances are he's not going to ask you to change jobs. Chances are he's not going to ask you to walk away from your source of income to be a preacher or a missionary. He might, but probably not. There are some of you that are in this place that have been asking God for an answer. Seeking the Lord for an answer. I've been doing that myself. Guess what? The Lord has answered this week multiple times. He started the process in me. Why? Because this is something that's important to me. You need a financial blessing. You can't give everything but your finances to the Lord. You need deliverance in your life. You can't give everything but that habit to the Lord. It's got to be all in. So whatever you need to give to the Lord and go all in with, these altars are open. I don't want to ask you to come down and spend some time with the Lord. Spend some time with the Lord today and come back tonight and spend some time with the Lord tonight. We're not going to be online tonight. But at 6 o'clock, if you still choose to, to stay at home and do the distance thing, make a place in your home and pray. It doesn't have to be here, but it has to be somewhere. And so, without any further talk without any further encouragement the Holy Spirit has spoken today don't be half be whole come down leave your seat as half of the person and then come down here and pray and get up and be whole when you walk out amen would you come pray amen
Amen. We sang a song earlier that says this, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what my heart longs for. To be overwhelmed by your presence, Lord. I think that sums up what the Lord wants to do in our lives. It also sums up and gives us an idea of the position that we need to approach the Lord. If you can approach the Lord and say, Lord, do with me what you want, he will. He will. That's humbling yourselves. It's humbling yourselves. I sat down here a while ago, uh, just a few moments ago in prayer time. I said, Lord, I humble myself. And I thought to myself immediately, well, if I'm having to tell you I'm humbling myself, then I might not be humbling myself like I should. You don't have to tell the Lord what you're doing. He knows. He sees your heart. So I want to encourage you to find your prayer place and get in deep. Don't stop ankle deep, knee deep. Don't test the waters anymore. You've been testing the waters for years. Jump in. Go deep. Over your head deep. Why, Pastor? Why? Because if it's over your head, it's too much for you. Then you have to rely on the Lord. Rely on the Lord. He will help you. He will. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord Jesus, I pray. And I know that it went out, Lord God. And I know that there were people here and online both that needed to hear what you had to say today, Lord. I'm thankful to be the messenger. Lord, I ask you right now to seal what you've done in these hearts. And the more we come to you, Lord, I pray the more you will do in our lives. I know you will. And so, Lord, I'm done preaching half sermons. I'm done doing half things in your name. If it's got your name attached to it, then it's going all the way. Whatever I do, Lord, it has to be all the way. And it has to be dedicated to you. And so, Lord, help us to dedicate ourselves to you and go all in so that we can be whole and complete in you rather than broken and dead in this world. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your house viewing this online, Lord Jesus. We thank you for that opportunity today. We bless your name. Amen and amen. Don't forget about prayer time tonight at 6 o'clock. Thank you for joining us online. Thank you for joining us in person. Uh, uh, Lee will stand back there with the offering bag, and Andrew's going to stand right here. And if you would, just place it in when you go by. Thank you. God bless you.